Now we have, of course, 5 to 6 Walter Place, 19 and 29 North Square, Paul Revere House. The Paul Revere Memorial Association has filed an appeal for zoning relief to convert the existing residential property to accessory cultural use, renovate the courtyard, and provide improved access as part of the expansion plans for Paul Revere House. Did I get that right? Correct. Okay. Take it away. Um, it's, it's very exciting for us to finally be at the point where we're doing this. So that's, that's number one for us. Um, I'm Nina Zaneri. I'm director of the Paul Revere House. I'm joined by Carl King, who's our attorney, and Don Mills, who's our architect. And they'll talk a little more about the use and the inside of the building <coughs> and the designs. But I just want to remind everyone that we bought the, house, the building in May of uh, 2007. It was in uh, very bad shape, had some structural defects. Uh, we did the exterior renovation and the structural improvements first. We had a chunk of money. We wanted to do that so that we could show the community what our intention was. And the building itself uh, has some remaining historical character, even though uh, some parts have been gutted. It is National Register eligible, which means it has a certain level of historical significance. We've retained what features we can. Uh, old two over two windows, clapboards, stairways, uh, fireplaces, the old cooking fireplaces, uh, one door, and there's a decorative cornice up at the top of the building. So we've, we've done what we can to keep its character because that's important to us as a historical institution. The, the main thing that it does for us is one, handicap access for the Revere House that allows us to have the elevator in that building rather than putting something on the outside of the Revere House. So the second floor will be accessible. We'll improve first floor access rather than having to go to the street side. We'll have the grade changed inside. Uh, we also will have uh, expanded public program spaces, public restrooms, which we know are quite needed in the north end, and expanded exhibit space. <coughs> and to a great extent, we're giving the neighborhood back a historic building that probably would not have survived. Uh, one of the things that we get asked a lot about is, are we going to use Lathrop Place, which is a, a private alley and a residential alley, as our public entrance? The answer is no. We'll continue to have visitors come from the North Square side. That's where the Freedom Trail line runs. Makes the most sense for us. So um, I'm going to ask Don to go over the floor plans for you, uh, both the courtyard changes and the uh, interior spaces, and then Carl will talk about the uh, start with the site plan and the courtyard. Um, this is the overall plan. Can everybody see, by the way, because you can't, feel free to move. Can you, want to, you want me to adjust all this? Okay, the... Um, The overall site plan is here with North Square at the bottom, Hanover Street at the top, Lathrop Place, a little alley that connects through to a site here. This is the building, 1835. There was a twin tenement home that the Revere Association purchased, and the exterior has been restored. There's been no change of use or occupancy for the building so far. Its current legal use and occupancy is as a single family house. There was a permit pulled and approved in 1990 to convert it to six units. Uh, that work was started but never completed, so it's still technically a single-family house. It's unoccupied currently. The, uh, the two pink blobs here are the Pierce Hitchborn House from 1711 and the Paul Revere House restored to 1680, 100 years before Paul Revere was there. And this area is their courtyard space uh, that they currently use. Lather Place building will be accessed from the courtyard. The courtyard, uh, a blow up of the courtyard with the Pierce Hitchborn house here, North Square below us, the Revere house here. It's essentially a large rectangular space um, that is a mostly paved courtyard space. They use it for um, outdoor programs as well as for access to the Revere house. Uh, the ticket booth is on the North Square side, the, the brick wall is here. 
what's going to happen here is a reconfiguration of the courtyard space so that we eliminate the, the steps that go into the side of the Revere House so you, you can pull a wheelchair in there without any need for ramps or railings within the recreating <coughs> courtyard area. That also brings us up to a level that gets us into the Lake of Place building, again, without need for rails or wheelchair lifts or anything of that sort. Uh, Nina mentioned that we're going to be providing access, first floor and second floor accessible entrances into the Revere House. The second floor will be, um, this is the back wall of the courtyard. Now, the second floor will be via a, an elevated walkway that will wrap around the two buildings. So we're not interconnecting the buildings except with a raised walkway that uh, if you've been to the Revere House, you go in through the kitchen at the courtyard, you go out through the bedroom at the second floor, and after you go out, you go back down the grade. Instead of going that, back down the grade, you'll be able to stay up, <coughs> stay up at that elevation and go into later place and also see the site from, a, from a, an upper level, which changes the, the view and characteristic of the site quite a bit. The Lathrop Place building is a, it's a small building, um, four stories. This is the uh, entrance level historically. This is the ground level historically. Uh, same orientation as the site plan, Lathrop Place up here twin entrances into the building. <coughs> These won't be used as entrances, but they've been restored to their, to their uh, 1835 and 1890 character. They're evidence of both the original 1835 building and, the, and a major modification that was done in 1890. So we restored both halves on the outside to reflect those two time periods because there was evidence of both time periods in the building. Um, the, the back L here was uh, substantially rebuilt. The, the, the fireplace that held the cooking ovens was leaning a foot and a half out of plumb towards the building. It got rebuilt while retaining all of its character. The mason took detailed photographs of all the brickwork so he could put it right back the way it had been with the same bricks, except for anything that was severely deteriorated. So that we could show evidence on the back wall, which is prominent to the faces of the Revere Courtyard, of the various construction campaigns that went on in that building. So the construction joints that were there, the variation of work is all still there. Even though we have, almost a third of it was completely reconstructed. Um, this shows what we're going to call the second floor of Lather Place because it aligns with the second floor of the Revere House. So if you come out of the Revere House, you come into a gift shop. There'll be a, an area here that helps to highlight the tenement nature of that building uh, with the cooking ovens and so on, the character as well as serve as a visitor center. There will be a small elevator that goes within the building to get you to uh, what are three public levels within the facility uh, and get you back over the rear house. The ground floor <coughs> covers the whole footprint. Excuse me, that's, that's a four level building, right? It's a four level building. Yeah, this, level is going to be this we're calling the second floor, yep. which is the, uh, historically the entrance from Lathrop Place. Yep. Historically, the first floor. Right. We're just renaming. We're renaming the basement, the first floor. But you mentioned access to the public. It's going to be one floor that's going to be offices, right? Is that correct? Yes. Out of okay. the four floors, the upper floor will be for staff only. Okay. I'll show you on four levels. Okay. Uh, the lower three floors will be, um, well, the, the first floor will be uh, an accessible entrance from the courtyard. Mm -hmm. This is currently an outdoor co uh, courtyard space, and we're actually doing an addition here. Um, part of it's covered, part of it's interior. There'll be a Revere of Derived permanent exhibit. The core area here, which has an accessible bathroom, elevator, jams closet. And then out on this side, at number five, Lither Place, will be a large meeting room, which they currently do not have in the building. They'll be able to have up to 45 people in the room, a couple of school groups. Get them out of the courtyard, which is where they have most of their larger group activities right now. Uh, and it'll also relieve some of the uh, indoor use, occasional indoor use of the Pierce Hitchborn House, the 1711 building, which is where they tend to have larger groups come in for certain events. Uh, on this, on, on the corner of this uh, part as well, below below grade, you can't tell it now. Um, it's, in, it's it's technically enclosed space underneath the deck right now. That will also be an addition on that side. We don't actually need zoning relief for the additions. We're well below the FAR. Uh, but Carl will go over the zoning. Uh, and, and then 
the elevator that <coughs> came in from a wheelchair, he would take the elevator up to the second floor in order to get across into the Revere House. The upper two levels. Talk a little bit about that walkway from the Revere House to Laker Place. Yes. Is that open or is that going to be covered? That's going to be open. Okay. <clears throat> the intent, though, is that it not be uh, a, a fire escape type structure. It'll have the fire. It'll have a simple wrought iron railing to it, but that the surface would be um, like a stone tile surface over a waterproof slab with heating through it, so that they don't have to shovel it and dump it onto the courtyard. Uh, and because that'll be continuous onto the two side decks of the of the L, the back L of five to six layer place as well, be a continuous surface. So very easy to walk on, not the sort of tentative exit to the rear house that you have now. Third floor, historically second floor of Lather Place. We're going to uh, retain and restore the twin stairs inside to retain the character of the tenement building. Um, the, the lobby, bathroom, elevator core continues up to this level, um, and then there'll be a program space in the L, uh, as well as the offices start to occur on this level. If you go up the next level, fourth floor, the elevator will not continue to the fourth floor. Instead, the overrun, the head house, the, you have to go a certain distance above the last landing for uh, safety clearances for an elevator. That will be within the building so that we don't need to penetrate the roof. We don't need to change the roofscape. Um, and the staff will have more offices, staff library, uh, mechanical equipment, and access to the roof deck, which uh, the, the surround of the roof deck has already been restored to what we saw in some photographs uh, with roof fencing uh, of two different types that we saw in, in historic photographs. Picket fence on one side and a rail fence on the other. Uh, but that will not be accessible to the public. The, we have elevations as well, if you want to see any of that. But, I don't think yeah. that's ready in time. Yeah, I'll, I'll just take this back to the site for Carl to talk about the zoning issues that we have. Yeah. There are no variances. Variances are not required. Uh, we simply need special use permits for zoning and for the groundwater conservation of the lake district. Very briefly, I'm Carl King. I'm representing the house. Uh, technically, this property is three different sites, three different street addresses. So we had to file, although we asked inspectional services to treat it as one property going forward, we still had to file three applications. Uh, for Lathrop or Lothrop Place, uh, we're looking for a conditional use permit because a use known as an accessory cultural use in, this, in the North End requires a conditional use permit. And we believe that uh, that certainly uh, Having this building immediately adjacent to the Paul Revere House and the historic site uh, is an appropriate location for a cultural use <coughs> uh, use. Uh, it should have no impact on, on anybody, if you will. As uh, Nina said, the, the main entrance will stay the same off the door square. Uh, it shouldn't have any impact on, uh, on the neighborhood. Uh, you won't even know we're there from Hanover Street. The blue line here <coughs> defines the groundwater conservation overlay district. Actually, the property that is the Paul Revere House is outside the district. But the area in which the walkway will be built straddles two lots that are within the district. Uh, and so and it exceeds the 50 square feet that triggers it. So what we intend to do and our engineers are working on and we'll clear with uh, Boston Water and Sewer is a retention system that basically, while we don't have to deal with it, we're going to treat the whole courtyard as, 
as one unit. And uh, hopefully, you know, uh, somewhere near the rear, so it's as far away from everyone, uh, we will have an underground retention system that recharges the required amount of water that we're required to recharge. Uh, uh, we don't believe that it's going to be extensive, as well, the There'll be some changes in the pervious versus impervious surface down here. It's not going to be very much, but uh, the engineers are working on that. And uh, as you know, Boston Water and Sewer has to bless it before we get to the zoning board. And, uh, and well, as I say, the engineers are hard to do. If you have any questions, so I'd be happy to try to answer them. Actually, I I think it's great that you're adding more public space for the large group gatherings where you said currently I think the only alternative is that they have to be outside to gather and of course in the inclement weather that can be a problem. And secondly, um, you should be applauded for the fact that you are going to be offering public restrooms. How many public restrooms do you do? Three. There's three, three unisex toilets. Well, provided the plumbing board agrees with the attribution of unisex. Or one one per floor, uh, which we could do female, male, female, and meet the occupancy requirements. <coughs> because there's there will be different activities going on at different levels. We've asked the plumbing board for variance on, on the designation of those three toilets. Yeah, we particularly want to avoid the school group on the third floor, where the little boy has to go all the way down to the first floor to the men's room, which seems absurd. But. Where did funding from this project come from? Um, the funding is, uh, we've raised about $2.8 million of a $4 million capital campaign. Not all is for the construction, but a good portion. Uh, we got a, a rather good sized grant from the National Park Service. The Revere House is part of the Boston Park, even though we are privately run. We are part of that partnership park that uh, Boston, where, where a number of the sites are privately owned, but part of that. So we received a competitive grant. We also had two cultural facilities funds grants, which were also uh, competitive, which was about 600000 And So we had government support, but also the rest of it is private. And the um, two, the cultural facilities fund grant is matching. You have to match it one to one private. And our NEH grant was three to one three private to one government. So even in the instance where we've had federal funding, the we've been uh, had to match that with private, which is which I think is good. It's it's a good thing. So we're very we're close enough on the funding that we feel comfortable that we should keep pushing ahead because <coughs> we'd like to open uh, optimistically it would be April of twenty thirteen. We don't plan to. In fact, one of the things a lot of people quite say, gee, your admission price is really low. I mean, we would love to keep our admission price low because there are revered descendants who sit on the board, and the board is very uh, strong about having the place be um, accessible, that the prices aren't high. With more facilities, we might go up a little, but we plan to keep it pretty reasonable. We also don't anticipate that we're not saying we need to raise our, get 100,000 more visitors to make this work. It really works within our current model. Um, and we would continue to be free to the North End, which we are, and free to North End schools and groups. So that won't change. We'll just have better facilities to do it. And it will stay open during construction. Planning on phasing the courtyard. The courtyard part is what really impacts the current operations. So what we're talking about doing is renovating Lathrop Place and the back part of the courtyard. Uh, and then when we do the front part, we'll bring people in along the Pierce Hitchborn House um, and, instead of the main entrance. And then the, they, the, the benefit of having Lathrop Place online then will help relieve some of that courtyard congestion. A little tricky from a site logistics standpoint. Yep. Can we go? Um, I remember <coughs> we, you and I both were, we worked on the, we're members of the, of the uh, the uh, Freedom Trail Foundation at one point together. I know there was a lot of talk about collaboration. What is the Freedom Trail Foundation doing in relation to this project, if anything at all? Um, you know, we work with the foundation. Mostly their relationship with us is from a marketing standpoint. Um, we haven't sought funds from them because we've had funds, access to funds in other ways. Um, our primary partner 
because of the federal funding is the National Park Service, as you would expect. So we have uh, requirements that we work closely with the National Park Service, the National Endowment for the Humanities, and that triggers the Mass Historical Commission, Boston Landmark. So, I mean, in, in terms of the same way in which we work with the foundation and they're promoting our programs, that certainly continues in that way. But they are not, they're not a funder of the project. Yeah. May I make a suggestion for your own business on Richmond Street? You guys should come up with a sticker or something where there's an order here on it. You can point in the direction of the program. Actually, this is one of the most asked questions <laughs> on a regular basis. And being on the film yeah. chair, I might add a little bit of, uh, you know, working uh, instrument, but... Uh, the variety of arrow types. Yeah, because, it, because it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's the most asked question. People go, I've, I've gone to it as a resident many times. My kids have gone. I will do it very much. So hopefully everything works out for you guys. People ask him when they work here, how she says, don't go, he's not home. <laughs> we have to often to tell a few people that he's passed away. <laughs> That's, you know, it's a little bit of a concern. Does everybody know where Paul Revere is buried? He's over in the Copson? No, the, I mean the uh, one downtown Grammar? He's yeah. somewhere in the Grammar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that, a lot of people don't know that when they were doing the raising of the bell at the old meeting oh, yeah. house. Yeah. I kept asking people if they knew a Paul Revere and they had all kinds of questions. But he's right there on Tremont Street, right? He was the original entrepreneur, I gotta tell you. Absolutely. Is that, is that um, cemetery or three months? Yeah, on the right next yeah. to the yeah. Yeah. Does anybody else have any questions, comments about this? Yeah. It's pretty exciting. Uh, could you just tell us a little bit about your neighborhood notification? Yes. Um, I have, and I'll give you a copy of the letter that we sent out and the list that it went Perfect. to, and it went out on November 11th, and this is a copy of the appeal information, and there's a set of floor plans in there. Perfect. Excellent. And a contribution on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? Council? 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 Anybody else? 19 North Square and 29 North Square, Paul Revere House. <clears throat> it's an appeal for a zoning relief to convert the ex existing residential property to accessory cultural use, renovate the courtyard, and provide <coughs> improved access as part of the expansion plans for the Paul Revere House. We make a motion to support. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. unanimous. Congratulations. Thank you. We look forward to seeing. Uh, Paul Revere House expanded. There's going to be a heck of a party when we get it done. Yeah, we, we're expecting an invitation. You, you will. Thank you very much. That was a very nice presentation. Thank you.